Hello everyone and welcome to another Conan Exiles video. I'm Exiled Phoenix bringing you another guide for this Age of War update. Now if you've watched my recent PvP build video, you might be wondering how to get some of those weapons and armor pieces. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out as well. But in this video, I'll be going over the locations of most of that gear. Some of you have asked for dungeon guides in past comments, so I'll be doing a couple full dungeon runs in the process of getting these items and recipes. I'm also going to show you how to get the mandibles of Atlak Nacha, the most powerful arrows in the game, and you are absolutely going to want these because they do tremendous damage to players. In fact, here's a clip of me getting one shot by them while having over 400 HP. And I was wearing heavy armor. So be sure to watch till the end of the video to see that and all the other cool stuff I'm going to show you. So I wanted to start with the armor recipes first, but it's going to get a little complicated because one of the dungeons that has some of the armor recipes also has some of the other gear recipes. But for the most part, I can do the armor recipes specifically first in their own specific areas. So this first area we're going to go to is the sinkhole. And um, if you're even if you're coming up from Noob River, you know, level 10 or whatever you're at, you can get these because none of these recipes are locked behind a level cap anymore. So you can get them at whatever level. Um, and I just drop down here, land on this, and I do a little running jump, try to land on this. You won't take enough damage to kill you. You'll take some damage, um, and then you just jump over. That's a dangerous way to do it. If you really want to, you can leave your stuff in a chest up above and leave a bedroll up there in case you mess it up. But yeah, you just run down here, and by the way, this is the Voidforge um, dragon recipes for the heavy dragon and light dragon hide armor. And they're just right here. Now if you want, you can climb back out the same way I just came down, or you can run right out the front door of the arena. And while you're down here, if you really want to, there is a golem boss that spawns here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn creative mode off. But yeah, he spawns right there. And if you kill him, you can get a pretty good amount of blood crystals off of him, which is really good if you're first starting up on the server. Now keep in mind, you will get corruption the entire time you're in this area. Um, not the whole area that I was just in, but this area specifically. And here's the exit. Now we are here on the map. We originally jumped in right here at the sinkhole. Right from here you would just go up the river, back up this hill, and back up the sinkhole. For our second set of armor recipes, um, this is going to be the Silent Legion and Redeemed Legion armor. Um, if you're already here at the Black Keep getting the obelisk anyway, you might as well just run into the Black Keep. You don't even need any gear really to do this dungeon. You can just run past everything. Um, there's a key that you need to grab inside. You grab the key, go right past the final boss and grab the recipes and then jump down to get back out and I will show you that route. Okay, so once you're inside the dungeon, I know a lot of people get confused by this one. I actually had a couple people ask me to do a guide for this dungeon. So you're gonna completely ignore the right hand side, there's really nothing there. You're gonna ignore that direction, you're just gonna go left. And you're just going to kind of follow the path. There's a couple skeletons here, you can run right past them. Just keep going. Ignore that direction, just turn right here. Turn right again. Just keep following the path. Up the stairs. There's really only one direction to go here. There's a few skeletons in this area, you just run past them as well. Now here, you have the option to go right or straight. We're going to go straight. And then we turn right here, it's the only direction to go. Past a few more skeletons. Now here we have the option to go right or straight. We go straight. We're going to go that direction later. Right now, we're just going to get a key that we'll need to open the final door. Grab the key from this chest. It might take a little bit of dodging and like some Call of Duty zombies maneuvering to get past these skeletons on the way back through. But yeah, now this time we go through this door. 
down here, we can go straight or left or right. We go left. And this is the door that you need the key for. Now we go up the stairs. There's only one direction to go at this point, and this is where the final boss is. Now, all you do is run right past him, get the recipe here. There are several other um, tiles that have the recipes on them, like back in these corners. Um, you don't really need to get those, they're all the same thing, just get the one that's behind him. And then here, if you really want to, you can just jump off the edge here, just don't hit anything on the way down, and land in the water. Get up on this left side, up the stairs, turn left, and now we are right back at the entrance. And just so you're aware, this obelisk and the black keep are right here on the map. I would like to take a quick second to thank everyone who watches my videos, likes, comments, and those of you who have subscribed. If you like official Conan PvP stories and also Conan Exiles guide videos, then consider subscribing. I post twice a week, so you won't want to miss out on all the latest videos. Also, a special thanks to my channel members. I will eventually put a list of all my Flames level members at the end of each video, but for now, since there's only one of you, thank you Brandon Garcia for your support to the channel. Flames members get early access to new videos as well as shoutouts and members-only videos and posts, so if you'd like some additional content, that is always an option. Next, we are going to talk about the Spider Climb Boots. Now these, you actually have to do a journey step to get them. The first thing you're going to want to do is come to Finger Fang Rock, which is right here on the map, next to Unnamed City. And just approaching it um, should activate the journey step. Now you'll go into your journey steps, go to Mountaineer, and select it. And it says Climb Finger Fang Rock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into creative mode, and I'm going to fly up there, at least most of the way up. All right, there I got the journey step. Now you speak to the Mountaineer. Now you just gotta craft climbing boots and climbing gloves at any armor bench, and that will complete the journey step. If you actually have climbing boots or climbing gloves from a chest that you found in some random chest, you can actually just pick those up and it will give you the journey step. And once you've completed that journey step, you will be able to craft the spider climb boots. To get the ranger armor, this is a journey step and it's a tough one because you literally have to run every single dungeon in the exiled lands to get this. But what you need to do is come here on the map to the dregs and as soon as you go in here it should come up. Yeah, there we go. But now you, what you want to do is you need to have one of these guys follow you in here anyway because in order to actually access the dungeon you got to... Um, and somebody on top of the dungeon. <clears throat> and then it will open up. Now I'm not going to go through how to do this dungeon because um, I would then have to go and do all of the different dungeons. But that's how you start the journey step. Once you fin finish the dregs, you will then go on to do um, the Midnight Grove and then basically each of the other dungeons in a specific order just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. Once you have this Dungeon Delver journey step unlocked, where it says find the dregs, you would just go into the dregs, um, and then explore the dregs basically just means defeat the final boss. So that's all you have to do. You don't have to kill any of the other bosses along the way unless it's required to progress. You just have to find the dungeon and kill the final boss. Our next stop is Clail's Stronghold or the Warmaker Sanctuary, which is right here on the map. This is for the champion armor, as well as the master weapon fittings, and the bulked platings recipes. Oh, and also of course the Mordlin, and several other really OP weapons that are in here. Alright, so this first boss will drop the Axe of the Gate Guardian, which is a really good axe. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him. He's not guaranteed to drop it, so you may have to kill him a few times. And actually, he did drop it for me the first time. So there it is, actually the Gate Guardian. Now we continue on into the dungeon. At this point, we are going to go through the green door. Now, I am not going to do all three of these. You will need to do all three of these doors, or at least kill any one of these bosses three times. 
to get a key to get into the next section of the dungeon. Now this guy is not guaranteed to drop the Mordlin, but he will drop the Mordlin, Ranasun, Nordus, uh, and Balius, I believe, and possibly Takeda's voice. I can't really remember what his exact drop pool is, but that time we got a Nordus. But keep killing him and he will drop the Mordlin, which is the best spear in the game. Now I'm just going to go into the blue door, skipping the red door, because um, I'm just going to admin spawn a key in for the purposes of this video. Now the best thing this guy will drop is probably the Yogg's Touch, so we're gonna kill him just to see what he drops. Uh, he dropped the shield. Which is actually not too bad because there's a nice way to cheese the arena champion using a shield. Now assuming you've gotten all three statues from those rooms, you would put them in these three sockets. Now, I did not get any of them, so I'm not going to have any, but I just I just spawned my key in from the admin panel. And that would give you a key for this door. Now, I am going to show you where all of the special keys are to get extra scraps in this dungeon, because you're going to want to get as many scraps as you can to cra actually craft the champion boots. But at this junction, we're going to go left. Avoid the traps by just taking the very right hand side here. And then there's more traps here that you need to go through the middle to avoid. Now this guy will drop either the Annihilator or the World Breaker. And also the key to the arena, which you don't actually need to proceed. But, eh, might as well grab it while you kill this guy anyway. Alright. So you don't actually need the key to the arena. I'll show you where you can use a shortcut to get past that. Now this first special um, rusted key that you're going to need to get extra scraps is up here. Actually, it's in this chest. Yeah, rusted key. These are special keys that have a timer on them, and they only work in this dungeon at the uh, final four doors of the final boss room. Then we go to this side, go up the stairs, avoiding all the traps. Keep in mind there are traps at the bottom and the top of the stairs. And the rest of the key is in this chest. Now we run back out, carefully avoiding the traps again. Oop, didn't do very well there. And ran through all those too. Alright. Anyway, here we jump up here. And there's another rusted key in this chest. I use the same pad to avoid taking damage on the way back down. Jump over these traps, go to this side. There's not normally a trap in front of that chest unless you um, triggered extra traps by placing the statues incorrectly at that previous room where you get the first key. Now we have all four keys. Normally you would need a key to the arena to get through that door, but there's also this little shortcut that we can just take right through here. Now, contrary to popular belief, it is very easy to kill the arena champion. All you really need is a good one-handed weapon. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the Axe of the Gate Guardian we actually got from the first boss. We're going to turn off creative mode. Okay, so we're out of creative mode. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to kill her. Basically all you need is any weapon that'll knock her down. And it's really that easy. I did get hit once there. That's because I staggered her improperly. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you really want to cheese her, you can get out a shield because for whatever reason, even though she's got a mace, she always does a light attack in her combo, so it's going to just rebound off the shield. Now she gave me 12 scraps that time. Normally she used to give you only 5 to 10, and only 5 to 10. But since Age of War, it seems like they've buffed her drop rates a little bit, because sometimes she gives you as many as like 23. Now, if we go past her 
Um, back here in this back room, this is where we learn the champion armor recipes. And they are right here. And that is going to be the recipe for the champion boots, which is really good. You absolutely need to have that if you're going to be using heavy armor in PvP, because it removes cripple instantly. Now along this snowy stretch, you can pretty much skip everything here. Um, if you want to, you can fight this skeleton dragon, get his skeleton key, and um, open the chest back there. But keep in mind that if you're in light armor, he can one-shot you with his breath, so be very careful. And this is the final boss. Now, since I have four of the rusted keys, I'm going to open these doors first. Now these four doors on the side are the doors that you need these rusted keys for. There's anywhere from one to two scraps inside each one of these doors. Got two. There I got one. Another one scrap. And another one scrap. So that was a pretty poor run. I only got five scraps there. You can get as many as eight. And now we fight the final boss. And he dropped 10 scraps, which is actually the minimum that he drops. <laughs> he usually drops 10 to 15, I think. Alright, now we go out towards the door with the two torches on either side. Tall torches. And here's the Godbreaker armor and Grandmaster armorsmith recipes, which includes the bulk platings. And on this side, we get the Grandmaster weaponsmith, which is the master weapon fittings. And then we head out this way to get back to the beginning. Now, there are some cool little chests back here in this corner. There's your climbing boots, you can pick those up to get part of your journey step for the uh, spider climb boots. Some of these have gold and silver in them, so you might want to get that. And here we are back at this map room. After exiting the Warmaker dungeon, which is right here, you might want to come down here to this scorpion, try to get him because he's really close, and some of the other spears that you're going to want drop from legendary chests. So yeah, spears like the Gavain's Rusty Pike, the Vaulting Pole, and the Black Dragon Pike will all drop from these random legendary chests. So you should probably be trying to kill these bosses whenever possible. Oh, and the Impaler. Speaking of which... Now this one has pretty poor durability again, but it's still a really good spear because it's got gouging. Oh, and if you want to see a really good legendary farming route, um, I have a video on that, and I will link that in the description, so go check that out too. To get the regular Lemurian Pike, we're going to go here in the jungle to the Witch Queen's Palace, and we are going to go inside and fight her. But yeah, first you basically just fight these two statues, avoiding the lasers, And then she should come out and fight you herself. Now this stuff doesn't really matter. It's really the recipes that are on her throne that you want. There you got the Lemurian um, Royal Armor, Lemurian Pike, and Lemurian Sword. And then you just exit out the way you came in. Now while you're here in this area of the jungle, if you want to, you can get the Ancient Lemurian weapons, which are also really good craftables. And they are going to be in the Dagon dungeon, which the entrance to is right here. You just interact with this boat, it will take you to the dungeon. 
Now keep in mind if you're going to do these dungeons anyway, you might want to do them in the order to get the journey step for the ranger armor, according to the order it tells you to get them in. And there is the ancient Lemurian axe recipe, you don't have to fight this guy. I forgot I'm not in creative mode, so they're all over me. Now to get the ancient Lemurian sword, we're going to go to this first entrance right here. Now I'm going to do this in not creative mode, so you can see it's easy enough to swim from one of these to the other, even without any special gear. Ancient Lemurian sword recipe is right here. You don't even have to fight these guys if you don't want to. Now we swim to this second entrance. Basically each one of these lit up buildings is a place that you can go to get something. Now this particular boss, you might want to kill him just because he will drop a scale, which is required to craft the Ancient Lemurian Tridents. And there's the Ancient Lemurian Trident recipe. Now, they do require two scales for each trident. It's up to you if you want to get them. They do do the severe cripple effect, so you might be interested in that, but you cannot poison them due to this fact. The Sword of Grom, which is what I've been using, drops from four different bosses in the unnamed city. It is not a guaranteed drop, in fact it's pretty rare actually, but this is one of the bosses right here. This is where I'm at at the moment. And if we fly over this way a little bit, just above the Red Mother, there is another boss that also has a chance to drop them. And then if we go around the back here behind the Red Mother, there's another boss right here. That's a chance to drop one. And if we fly all the way over to this side of the city, at this point we are right here. This is the fourth boss. And to get the hollow bone arrows, you would pretty much just take a black blood pick or the best pick that you have. I would recommend a black blood pick to these caves as well. Any one of these four caves with the harpy monsters in them, the black harpy creatures, those will all drop hollow bone arrows. It's just a very small chance to get them. So I would recommend running careful harvest in your expertise tree. And that will give you your best chance of getting hollow bone arrows from those harpies. To get the hollow bone bow, you will want to go into either one of these caves. This is a two-way cave. It basically goes in, wraps around, comes out to the other side. Um, and there are two bosses in there that can drop the hollow bone bow, and I will do a separate video on that at some point. To get the recipes for the Kari bow, you will have to enter the wine cellar, which is right here, and complete this dungeon. And the final boss has a chance to drop either the Kari weaponry, which will include the bow, or one of three different armor recipes. So good luck getting the one you want to drop, but the one you're going to want is the Kari weaponry. So you will have to complete this dungeon for every single recipe you want because it is a consumable scroll. It's not something you can just interact with at the end. And I will do a separate video on this dungeon as well at some point. To get the mandibles of Atlak Nacha, you're going to come to this spot in the volcano. I will show you how to get here from the obelisk. And this NPC, right now, it's a Kisthus Flesh Terror, but um, it sometimes spawns as a spider boss. And if you kill the spider boss, it will drop anywhere from 50 to 100 um, mandibles. But if you were to come from the obelisk, this is the route I would personally take. Just drop off the edge here. Try to jump over the lava, you might get burnt a little bit. Climb up on the bridge right here. And just climb up right here. If it is not the spider, just kill him. And hopefully the spider will spawn the next time you come back. NPCs generally take about 15 minutes to respawn, so you can just come back later whenever you're back here again. Now I'm testing this on single player, and eight times in a row, the spider did not spawn, but I finally got it to spawn. So here it is. Now, I think the rates of spawn are a little bit better than that normally. I think I just got really unlucky. But yeah, there it is, 98 of these mandibles. They're 23 and 50, so really good um, arrows, the best arrows in the game. 
To get the Ak Baton and throwing knives, you're gonna want to come to Skittering Cave, which is right here on the map. And you're just gonna go in, kill all these spiders on the way through. It's a good way to get some ichor while you're here. There's also silk that you can farm if you really need it. And you're definitely gonna need layered silk to make some of these kits. As well as ichor too, of course. And we just killed this spider boss, which is essentially just a regular legendary boss, just with an additional drop. And sometimes he drops them the median, but um, other times he will drop the throwing knives. And it's always a guaranteed drop, it's going to be either the Nemedian or the Throwing Knives. And then you can chop him up for a Skeleton Key as well, and open the chest right behind him. If you do get the Throwing Knives, these will be their stats. 71 and 0, they're really strong throwables. Now, to get some of the purchasable legendary weapons, we're going to come up here to Mechkamosa's Spire, right here on the map. And make sure to bring plenty of Blood Crystals with you. Um, and I am going to purchase 10 of these Ophidian Magi caches. I already have 4 on me. If we go ahead and open these up, you get Alchemical Base, Steel Fire, Gold, Silver, and Obelus coins, which are what you want to trade in. And by just getting 10 of those, I got 92 Obelus. And we're going to go down here and see what these traders have for sale. War Spear of the Black Circle. So this is the only purchasable spear. It's not really that good. In fact, it's really bad compared to some of the other spears. It's only 51 and 8. But it's decent if you don't have anything else. And this guy has Els Drinker, which is actually really good. Els Drinker has 67 and 9, so when you put a kit on it, it's going to be 72 and 21. And it is one of the two strongest swords in the game right now, or at least on Exiled Lands. So it is pretty good considering you can purchase it. Now the other things we would be looking for is the Balpedier's Razor, which is a good agility two-handed sword, really good for farming, for a farming weapon. Um, and then also Momentum, which is a really good mace, good for thralls, and even good for players if you really want to use it. To be honest, any of the legendary weapons purchasable here are pretty good weapons considering you can purchase any amount of them you want if you have enough blood crystal. Oh, and also the Glimmer Moon is sold here, which is a really good one-handed axe. Alright, so since we're here at Mechkamosa Spire, we're going to talk about the leggings of Kurak. In order to get the recipe for those, you're going to need to come over here to this portal, which is the entrance to the dungeon. You're going to want to put at least 30 blood crystals in here and activate the portal. And you will want to complete that dungeon and interact with the recipe plaque at the end. Now, I may do a separate guide video on this at some point, but I think for right now it'll just make this video a little bit too long. To get Scorpion Queen Poison, we are going to go into the abandoned silver mine right here in this location. Now this is one of the dungeons you are required to complete in the journey step to get the ranger armor. So keep that in mind when you decide what order you want to do this in. You can kill this Scorpion King here if you want to to get an extra key but you don't need to because there's only one chest in this dungeon anyway. And the Scorpion Queen at the end here will also drop a key. And this is the Scorpion Queen. Now, just like with hollow bone arrows, you're gonna wanna have careful harvest to get the Scorpion Queen Venom Glands off of her and a Black Blood Pick. Specifically, a Black Blood Pick with an advanced tool upgrade kit on it or um, oil of bounty if you can afford it. She also drops this handy dandy shield. Now, I do not have careful harvest, so I might not actually even get anything. Oh, there, I got 10. Nice. And we'll open this chest. Hearts Blow, these are actually really good daggers because they do bleed and gouging. And then the actual recipe for the Scorpion Queen Venom is right here behind her. Now, if you just walk out this door, it'll take you back outside. Alright everyone, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it or learned something from it, hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.